table in a little bit. Uh, but will you roll all these numbers? Yes. Is there a different chance of rolling certain numbers than others? Absolutely. Most often, you should be rolling threes and fours. Right? And then after that, twos, then fives, and then ones and sixes are equally spread. Well, you'll get all of them at some points, just most of them should be threes and fours. How many people feel okay with making up this histogram? Right. Good, good. You know what's interesting is that not only can we make a histogram out of our prob probability distribution, we can also find the mean and the standard deviation for this data. So we'll talk right now about how to find the mean from a probability distribution. I'm going to draw some parallels from a frequency distribution, so this should be kind of nice for us. So let's discuss mean. Variance and finally standard deviation. Oh, yeah. You know we're getting back into standard deviation, did you? You know you're going to have an exciting day when you came into stats class. Uh huh. You're like, ah, more probability, maybe. Probably some distributions, but you didn't know about variance and standard deviation. Isn't this, aren't you glad you came here today? This is a good day for you. I think it's a good thing for you. Oh, yeah, this should have wrong that. Let's start with a mean because we know that we're probably going to have to take the mean to find our standard deviation. That's what we did last time when we first introduced this stuff. So, how about the mean? Well, the way I'm going to do this is I'm, I'm going to draw this from the mean of a frequency distribution. I'll, I'll, I'll play around with that thing and make it into a, a, a mean for a probability distribution. So we're going to change a frequency distribution's mean into a probability distribution mean. Here's how we're going to do it. If you remember, this is from a long time ago, but the mean of a frequency distribution was this. You add it up, every value, but for, hope you, if you don't remember this, go back and watch the video, but for a frequency distribution, the x value was actually the midpoint of your class. Do you remember that? That was the midpoint. We had x, we had the midpoint, times the frequency for each class. This was the midpoint times the frequency for each class, and then we divided by the total number of items in our sample, or in our population, in this case it would be a population. I'm using population because we're dealing with a finite or countable number of items, so we're dealing with the whole thing. So we're only to die, that would be a population-based probability there. You, you, the only thing you can get out of it is one through six, right? You can't get anything else. That's why we consider this to be a population here. So for a population's frequency distribution, if we're finding the mean of that, we take the midpoint times the frequency, we divide everything by n. You with me on this? You guys awake today? There's only one, you better wake it up, this is important stuff I'm dealing with right here. Uh, there's only one thing you're going to have to trust me on. And you have to trust me that dividing a, a sum like this after you've already added is the same thing as adding up the division as you go. You're going to have to believe me on that part. Do you believe me on that part? I hope so. I'm a math teacher. I mean, what's wrong with you? You don't believe me. Come on. Think I'd lie to you? Yeah, I probably would lie to you. But not about that. Not about that. I can prove it to you, though. Uh, if you want to do this thing right here and say 35 or 5, you know it's 7, right? You could also do it this way. You could say this is equal to one fifth plus one fifth plus, and do that 35 times. Do you believe me? If you do that 35 times, it, it would add up to 35 over 5. You know that's true, right? So I can separate something that's already added and being divided by adding each little division piece in the row. So that's a true statement. You can do it. But once we do this, this is pretty kind of obvious what we have here. I hope you're seeing this. Check it out. This is the same thing as a sum of. I'm going to use a little fraction word here. You should be able to do this on your own, though. This is the same thing as x times f over n. 
Do you believe that? That's for sure true. For sure true. Well, here's the cool part. What is a frequency divided by the total number of items? What's a frequency divided by the total number of items? Hey, that's outcomes divided by total number of possible outcomes, right? That's a probability. <coughs> so what we have here is the sum of x times p of x by a little substitution. This expression right here, this equation, that's your mean. Also, there's another expression for mean that you need to know. If you're ever asked for expected value, expected value is the mean. It means, it means this. What's the average you should get? You should get somewhere between a 3 and a 4, right? Are you, are you with me, guys? What, what should you get out of this thing? The average you should get is around a 3 or a 4, or somewhere in there. That's the average. What are you expected to get? You're expected to get somewhere around a 3 or a 4. This is telling you what should probably happen here. You should probably be getting, probably, probability, right? You should probably be getting somewhere around 3 or 4. That's also known as the expected value. So mean and expected value are synonymous. So when you get down to your homework and it's, well, we never talked about expected value. Yeah, we have. It's a mean. Same exact thing. So mean or expected value. Hey, what do you say we do this with our diet? You ready to do that? See what this, if this comes out the way we, we hope it does? Do you guys have any questions on the histogram part? Because I need to erase that to do our probability. Okay, so, so far, we've learned about random variables. We know the difference between continuous and discrete, yes? What are we dealing with in this chapter? So, countable or finite. We know what a probability distribution is. Looks really similar to frequency, right? We just have our values and the probability for each one. We know we can make histograms out of that and have just developed the mean for us. Let's see if we can find the mean of my weighted die example. Also, we know every probability, of course, has got to be between 0 and 1. And if we add all of them up for our distribution, it has to equal exactly 1. Okay, so our sum of p of x times x, we add all that up, that is our mean. So let's do this together. The first thing we need to make up is a column for x times p of x. Because that's what this says. It says you're going to multiply them, and then you're going to add them all. And that right there is your mean. No extra work. So find x times p of x. Let's do that together. I'll take care of the first one, OK? First one is 0 0.05. Now I did all the hard work. Go ahead and do the rest of them. That was funny. Use your calculator if you have to. How am I getting all these? Were you able to get all those? Now, some people are, are going to probably ask, well, wait, Mr. Leonard, wait a minute. I thought you said a probability can't be between 0 and 1. Or can't, I'm sorry, it has to be between 0 and 1. What about that one? What about that one? Are we dealing with the same situation here? No, these aren't probabilities anymore. We're multiplying a value times a probability. What this is giving us is what we had here when we did uh, our, our frequency distribution mean before we add them all up. Actually, we, we did that. We multiplied first and then divided. But 
Yeah, we're multiplying. We're just getting our value times our, our probability. If we add all these things up, that's going to give us our mean. So the next thing you got to do, <coughs> add those. Do that for me on your own. Add those real quick. Add that column. So this would give you the sum of x times p of x. Because as soon as we're done with this, shoot, hey, x times p of x, we add them all together. x times p of x, we add them all together. That is your mean. So our mean is, what's, what's our mean here? No extra work, no other dividing. We already took care of the dividing. Look, look what you're doing, okay? When you're dealing with the mean, you, you know that averages, you add everything up and you divide by the number you just added. <coughs> what you're doing here is you're adding everything up and dividing by the number you added, except we're dividing as we're going here. Where the probability is it's really, since it's a, it's a decimal, it's like you're dividing as you're going. That's fine. We're just doing that here. We're taking that probability. The probability is already the division. That's what that is. You're just dividing as you go. So we don't have to do any more dividing. You've already done that piece by piece. You just add them all up, and that is your mean. So your mean in this case is 3.4. Wait a sec. Wait a second. That can't be right, can it? Can you get a 3.4 on a die? But this is what we're talking about, right, as a die. What's it mean that we get a 3.4 as our mean, as our average? A little bit more of a chance of a 3 than a 4. If you remember from your probability distribution I just had up here, 3 was a taller column, right? But just by a little bit. What the 3.4 says is that on average, over the long run, you roll this a billion times and you average those results, those results will not be a 3 or a 4, it'll be a 3.4. If you average a couple numbers, you don't have to necessarily get the number on the die, right? You can get a number between there, and that's what we're talking about here. What this says to you is that we're most likely going to get 3s and 4s again. That's what it says. More 3s than 4s, just like your probability distribution said, but that's what we're expected to get. Somewhere around a 3 or 4. How many people understand the idea of a mean? Good. Good Now, we do have the variance idea, too. We'll talk about variance. Of course, we know variance and standard deviation, they're very closely linked together, right? So if we find the variance, we pretty much automatically have the standard deviation. Let's look at the variance, and then we'll be done after that today. Hey, by the way, we're talking about variance, I know, but I want to reinforce the standard, standard deviation idea. What does standard deviation tell you? Oh, kind of. A z-score would tell you the number of standard deviations away from me. We're not there yet. We're not at a z-score. We're talking about standard deviation. Standard deviation gives you the average distance from the mean. The average deviation from the mean. We get that from a variance. Remember that symbol? What's that symbol? Little cannon thing. Sigma. Yeah, very good. Sigma or little cannon thing, we're going to go with sigma. Yeah, this is lowercase sigma. For variance, we had squared. That was a symbol for